Thanks for your interest in international tax course videos. If you like to purchase the entire course, click the link in the description. If you are watching this on mobile, you can click the downward arrow here and it will show you the link to purchase the entire course. Article 23 deals with elimination of double taxation. This article principally is the crux okay, of the entire DTAA and it has an applicability across various articles. Now what does this do? At the end of the day, what is the purpose of a DTAA? Purpose of DTAA is that the same person should not be taxed on the same income in two countries, right? So let's say for example, if you look at the India-USA Double Taxation Avoidance Agreement, let's say there's a person, Mr. X. If he gets $100 from India as income, on which India puts in $1.30 as taxes, the cash that he gets is going to be $1.70. Now the USA government also considers this $100 as income and levies another $40 of taxes without actually giving a credit for the taxes which have been withheld then he loses another $40 here and the total income he makes is only $30. So effectively his return or the net taxable income comes to $30 when the total income was $100. It is to avoid this double taxation which is $40 by US and $30 by India that this article deals with. In such a case what can happen is two things can take place. Either the Indian and the US government may agree that the total tax we are going to impose is $40. That's the higher of the taxes between these two. Let India retain maybe $15 and let US say get $25 right situation 2 let me write this down this is situation 1 situation 2 could be in India may agree with US that the entire $40 will be paid as taxes in India and US is not going to tax the income actually it may not be 40 it may be 30 only because that's the corporate tax rate which India has, right? But the entire tax, whatever that quantum might be, will be levied only in India. Or a third situation could be that India says, we are going to levy $15 tax taxes. US says, I will impose $40 as taxes, but I will reduce whatever taxes are paid in India from this number and therefore the cash that has to be paid to me will be $25. Effectively resulting in a total cash outflow of $40 in this case, $40 in this case and $40 in this case. Right? Now if you see on an income of $100 the net cash available with the shareholder is $60 in all the three cases. So you are effectively avoiding double taxation. How? By agreeing that both the states share taxes, only one of the states imposes taxes or one state imposes taxes and the other one gives a credit for this. Generally these first two are given in the article itself, right? It is the elimination of double taxation or these credits which is more a discussion matter under article 23.